Pearson 2014, recently joined Carol with Toastmasters a few months ago. The title of his speech is, It Pays to Know Your ABCs. It Pays to Know Your ABCs, Renato Amarena. Fellow Toastmasters and our honored guests, how many of you learned the alphabet by singing the song A, B, C, D, E, F, G? Raise your hands. Wow, a lot of you. Well, that's how I learned it. And to this very day, it's the only way I could recite the alphabet from start to finish. I want to share with you a true story and a funny story at that. I was living in Pennsylvania at the time, and I was invited to some friends in New Jersey. It's a two-hour ride, so I wanted to get an early start. So I headed out there, spent the day out in New Jersey, had a great time. Stayed for dinner and hung out for a while. And before I knew it, I looked at my watch and was like, wow, it's 11 o'clock and I have a two-hour drive home. So I said my goodbyes, hopped in my car, and began my trek back to Pennsylvania. Now, the only way back is to take this road 195 in New Jersey. Now, this road is pitch black. And worse, people drive on this thing like they're on the autobahn doing 90, 100 miles an hour. So I'm driving along, I'm in the fast lane, and suddenly I see a pair of headlights coming at me at lightning speed. This guy went around me like an S and came so close to my front bumper that I swerved into the shoulder. Within seconds, I see blue and red lights in my rear view mirror. The cop didn't pull the maniac that passed me by at 100 miles an hour. No, he pulled me over. So I pull over to the shoulder, and has anyone seen that New Jersey State Trooper? These guys are like Rambo wannabes. I mean, they, they're, they've got the uniform, they've got the jacket, the hat, the, the crew cut, the leather strap going across the chest, the big gun, and he comes up to me and he says, do you know why I pulled you over? I said, no, officer, I really don't. He goes, you swerved into the shoulder. Have you been drinking? I said, no, I haven't had a drop. Recite the alphabet for me. So I started. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. I stopped in K thinking that would be enough. And he looks at me like, keep going. So I picked up in the middle. Well, guess what? I left out a letter. So, sir, I need you to get out of the vehicle. So I get out of my car and I walk over to the shoulder. And the shoulder... And this particular section of road is not paved. It's gravel. Worse, it's like this. So he tells me to stand with one foot out and count to 10, but not 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. I couldn't do it. I kept toppling over. So now he says, sir, I want to put your hands behind your back and walk towards the police car. <laughs> so I'm walking towards the police car. I get to the front of the police car, all of a sudden I hear, click. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, sir, you're under arrest for DWI. I haven't had a drop to drink, I told him. Just give me the breathalyzer test. He says, I don't have it in my car. I have to take it down to police headquarters. So he puts me in the police car. I'm sitting in the police car with my hands handcuffed behind my back. I feel like a squirrel in a cage. There's no way out of this thing takes me down to the police station and chains me to a metal bench. And I sat there for what had to be about 20 minutes, maybe a half hour. All of a sudden, another cop comes over and says, stand up. I want you to follow my finger. And I'm following his finger this way, that way, up, down. He turns to the other cop and says, oh, yeah, he's drunk, all right. So I haven't had anything to drink. I said, will you please give me the breathalyzer test? So finally, they walk me over to the machine. He says, okay, blow into this tube. I blow into it, guess what? The machine reads zero, point, zero, zero. As soon as the cops saw that, he unhandcuffed me. So he takes me to the front of the police station, and I ask the officer, that, where's my car? He says, sir, your car's been impounded. You have to come back Monday morning to get it. By now, it's about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, Sunday morning. I'm like, I live in Pennsylvania. How am I going to get home? 
He says, well, we'll see what we can do, but I'm not making any promises. <laughs> so I wait another 20 minutes. Finally, another cop comes out and says, I'm going to take you to where your car has been impounded. So I go over there, and I said, I want my car back. He goes, sir, if you want your car back, it's going to cost you $200. I'm like, $200? But I wasn't drunk. He says, sir, I'm sorry, but if you want your car back, it's $200. <laughs> So I paid the $200. I had no choice. If I wanted my car back, I needed to get home. The moral of the story, it pays to know your ABCs. <laughs>